Well, hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, November 6th, I hope. <laughs> I think it's November 6th. And it is a nice but somewhat rainy day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Hope you're all having a, a nice Sunday. <clears throat> I've uh, got a good start to the morning, getting some stuff done. And uh, yeah, just just sort of back to normal. I've, I've, I've completed re-entry after my trip last week. I was up in Vermont visiting my dad and my sister and brother and niece and nephew. Uh, spent most of the time with my dad, but uh, saw all of them. And it was, it was a great visit. You know, my dad's in the hospital. He's uh, still not great, you know, not in great condition, but he's stable. And they're talking about moving him to a rehab facility soon, maybe, maybe this week. So that's all good. Um, but you know, he's, he's taken a hit and I don't know where this is ultimately going. I don't know if he's ever going to be back to his, you know, old strength and, and home and, you know, mostly independent. Uh, we'll see. We'll just have to see. But I want to thank you. And I, I told him lots of folks are praying for him. And he said to thank uh, all of you, uh, for your prayers, your kind thoughts, your kind words. It's, it's really been a, a, a huge comfort in this time. And uh, he's doing better, so you know miracles happen. Uh, so thank you for all that, and please continue uh, and and continue to pray for the many many people in this community that are either uh, fighting an illness themselves or have a loved one that is. It it really amazed me at how many folks came out and said, you know, my dad, my mom, uh, myself uh, are, are dealing with similar issues, and uh, I I try to add each and every one of you to, to my prayers. I've gotten to the point now where I'm, I'm thinking of specific folks, but I just, I just pray for the, for the whole community because, you know, we all need a little, little help now and then. Uh, so that's where things lie today. I got, I got some shop updates. They're mostly woodworking shop updates. So if you're not interested in woodworking, stick around for a few more minutes and then you can go watch somebody smoke a pipe. But speaking of smoking pipes, I've got my Boswell uh, Calabash here, and it is chock full of haunted bookshop. Um, first pipe of the day, I am down to two pipes a day. The reason for that, if you don't know, is I explained it in my live stream on Friday, and I'm not going to go into it now, so... If you really want to know, check out the live stream. It's nothing terrible. It's hopefully temporary, but it's interesting. I, I started this on, it must have been Wednesday was the first day that I limited myself to two. I'm supposed to have two at the most three bowls a day. And, you know, I've been for years just doing whatever I wanted to. And I thought, you know, am I going to have trouble with this? This is because I don't feel like I'm in any way dependent or, or addicted. I do this for relaxation and enjoyment. I've never craved it. You know? So I thought, let's see what happens. So um, Wednesday I did two balls, no problem. Had one in the morning, had one in the evening. Uh, Thursday I didn't have any. No, I had one. I had one in the morning, and and that was it. No problem at all. Friday I had three, because uh, I had one in the morning, and then I had two during the live stream. Um, but it, it really has not been a problem to do this. Now, I'd rather smoke my pipe, you know, it's, but it's not like I'm craving it or anything. And it's interesting, I find that the times that I tend to smoke the most are when I'm doing something. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm at the computer, I'm... Uh, even doing some woodworking or, or something like that. I'm, I'm cleaning a pipe, you know, those sorts of things. Uh, that's mindless, you know, and I'm not, I'm not saying I shouldn't do it, but I'm not really enjoying it. Driving is another example. You know, you can't drive and smoke a pipe and get the, you know, the full relaxation and, you know, all the, all the benefits that we, we talk about. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't smoke a pipe when you drive. It just means that, you know, if you can only smoke one or two a day, you probably want to not smoke the one when you're driving and smoke the one when you're uh, reading, you know, just as an example. So it's interesting. I've never really thought about it. Uh, 
and uh, why don't a bookshop taste a bit better and last a bit longer ever. So I've been I've been doing a lot of work down here in the shop. Uh, it's as I've talked about before, it's a rabbit hole. But we're we're making progress and there's a new project that's cropped up that I'm excited about that has nothing to do with pipe making and has nothing to do with getting the shop in order, but I'm excited about it and I'm gonna do it. So I thought I'd maybe tell you a bit about what's going on. Uh you may or may not enjoy this, but I got some pictures here that I'll show you. So this first one, uh, this is this is my workbench. I I've talked about flattening it. It's flat now. Uh, that is the the final flattened workbench. What you see in the background there, that it looks like there's a bunch of tools stuck into the end. That's actually another. Uh, it's actually one of those Stanley Workmate or Craftsman Workmate uh, things. That's right at the edge of the bench. That's where I keep my turning tools and some of the sanding discs, French wheels, and stuff like that for the sanding setup. But the bench ends at that point, and uh, it's it's a nice, solid, sturdy bench that I built years and years ago. That center portion is made of fur, so it's a little bit softer. Uh, the the outer edges uh, are, are ash, and that's great because it holds those dog holes really well, and I can use hold fast in it and everything. Anyway, it took me probably two two to three days of you know working, maybe two hours a day at the most to get that thing flat and uh, I'm happy with it so uh, the next thing that I decided to do was I'm finally installing a uh, what I call a face vise I do not know the names of vices I may be completely wrong about this I consider this to be a face vise what you see here I call an end vise uh, so that's a twin screw end vise for me and this little side thing so here I'm standing off to the to the side of the bench uh, this is a, I believe, a face vise. Now, this is a cheap knockoff one that I had laying around that I never intended to install, but I need something to hold the panels that I need to dovetail for the carcass of the of the um, the storage unit that I'm making to put all my sharpening and the sanding stuff in. So it turns out I've never dovetailed anything that wide. I usually just do drawers and such, and those are you know small enough that I can use that end vise but now I need something else that can hold uh, 18 20 inch piece and so this is going on I'm making some uh, jaws for it you know wooden jaws to cover the metal jaws and we'll be in business but before I complete that I've got this to work on and this is going to be fun this is uh, from my in-laws my mother and father-in-law have have this in their, uh, their house and they asked me it fell apart on them and they said can you fix this this was probably two years ago and it is actually they use it to cut cabbage it's a cabbage slicer um, it's actually called a crop cutter uh, this one is a TD crop cutter and I'm going to show you some more pictures of it but those are the bits that I've got and I'm going to recreate this based on those bits because some of the wood is Splitting, some of the construction methods are not ideal for this, and the wood is pretty poor quality. So this is the only clue that I had, uh, 672-W, and then it's the T&D Manufacturing Company, and I believe that says Indianapolis, made in USA. So that is everything that I had, and I was able to find some pictures. Uh, but before I get to those, this is the cutting mechanism, and I'll show you this after the pictures. This is a really cool little uh, mechanism, and I'm looking forward to getting this cleaned up and reinstalled in a nice new frame. Here's a picture from the internet of the T&D uh, crop cutter in all its glory. You can see the blade mechanisms held in the middle. It's uh, oh, basically a wooden platform. But there's this box that actually slides back and forth in a groove in that platform. We do not have that box, so we're going to recreate that from uh, from the pictures. And there's also a press that pushes down. This is apparently a newer version that had in uh, a sheet metal body to it rather than wooden, or maybe it's a you know somebody fixed an old one with sheet metal instead of wood. I don't know, but. You can see that press that you would use to push down. You put the cabbage in that box, you push down on the press, and uh, slice away. 
So yeah, that's uh, that's where we are with that. Thought you'd enjoy seeing some of those pictures, and what I'm I'm going to try to do is recreate that. I'm going to use all new wood because the the it's not that I couldn't uh, restore it, but it's yeah, there's a lot of cracking and stuff, and I'd probably wind up having to epoxy a lot of things. I'd rather just make it new. Uh, this is the blade mechanism. And let me put the pipe down for a minute because I don't want to cut myself. These blades are actually sharp, uh, rusty, but sharp. And hopefully you can see the bevel on that uh, right here. So that's blade one, and then blade two is down here. You can see they're kind of staggered. And the way that works is they're both... Don't grab the sharp end, Michael. <laughs> they're both kind of bolted to this cross piece uh, with these these bolts that go all the way through, and this this end piece here is threaded. But then there's also opposing screws on this side, here and here. Hopefully you can see those. They're threaded into the cross piece, and they just push on the blade. So you can actually change the elevation of the blade by loosening the screw that holds it onto the cross piece and then tightening the screw which would push the blade further out and cause it to tighten up against this cross piece. So it's a really interesting mechanism and very simple, just using two bolts that are opposing one another. And I believe that they should lock in place because of that opposing action and the fact that they're being kind of leveraged on a, uh, a threaded plane. That's as much engineering as I can do. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. So I'm going to have to de-rust this, clean them up, uh, sharpen them. Although they are actually surprisingly sharp. Uh, they don't pass the fingernail test, but they would pass the... Oh, that's not even a sharp end. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, they don't catch my fingernail, but they probably would give you a nasty cut if you weren't careful. So yeah, pretty cool. The TD Kraut Cutter. My in-laws don't use it for for making, well, they used to make sauerkraut, but I don't think they do anymore. Now they use it for halushki, uh, which is a Christmas thing, and uh, they need it before Christmas, so I'm hoping to get it done before Thanksgiving uh, to get it back to them. I'm going to make it out of cherry. Uh, cherry is a reasonably good wood for kitchen uses, uh, relatively sturdy, and I can use something like walnut oil to finish it. So that'll you know keep it in relatively good condition. It's gonna ha it's the sort of thing like a cutting board where you're gonna wash it. You're gonna have to oil it every once in a while uh, just to keep it from absorbing water. I guess is, is the way to put it. I don't know. I'm not a cutting board expert. If you are, let me know what I'm doing wrong. Uh, so we're gonna use cherry. Maple would probably be a better choice, but I don't have any maple, and I don't feel like. <clears throat> running off to the lumber yard, spending a whole day driving there just to get some maple. So we'll go with cherry. Uh, we'll build it based on the parts I have and making some changes. Like there's some large wood screws into end grain holding this thing together. I'd rather try to maybe use brass pegs going down uh, through the face grain uh, to, to, to make those connections. So we'll see if we can do that. And yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a fun little project. So I'll keep you posted as, as that goes along. Uh, it'll be on Instagram, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, uh, Kane Rod Piper, you'll, you'll see updates on that as well. <laughs> oh, so with that, I mean, that gives you an update on where things are here in the shop. Uh, I've lost my pipe in the process of showing you the blades. Let me get that back out. My one of two pipes for the day, so I'm going to savor it and I got to get off to do all the sorts of things I like to do on a Sunday a bit hindered by the rain today we'll see how that goes um, and yeah maybe I'll just get to play down here all day so with that my friends I hope you have a wonderful Sunday great week ahead and until we speak again I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon goodbye now Thank mm -hmm. you.